Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code 75, a great playlist if you are interview prepping. And I have that entire playlist linked down below if you do want to follow along or just check it out. So what is this question? Given a binary tree root, a node X in the tree is named good. If in the path from root to X, there are no nodes with a value greater than X. So X has to be the greatest value in that path from root to X. And we just want to return the number of good nodes in the binary tree. So example one, this is our tree over here. What are our good nodes? By default, our root node is always going to be a good node because the path from root to itself is just its own value and it's going to be the greatest value it's come across, right? So this is a good node. Now checking the left over here, this is not the greatest in its path, right? We have three over here, so this is not a good node. Now three over here is a good node. It's greater than or equal to every other node in this path. Now checking for over here, this is a good node as well. This is the greatest node in this entire path. One, this is not a good node. We have four that's greater than it. Three is also greater than it. And five over here is a good node because out of all the values over here, five is the greatest in this path. So our total here is going to be four and it's shown in blue above. Now example two, we have three, three, four, two. Again, what do we want to do? We count up the good nodes. Three is a good node by default, it's root. Three over here, also a good node. It is the max value in this entire path. And four over here, again, it's greater than or equal to all the other values we've seen before. it. Two is not the greatest one in its path. So our total here is three. And example three, we just have one node, one root node value one. This is a good node, so our output is one. Okay, so this problem is actually pretty straightforward. We just wanna make sure our logic is clear. Like always, we're gonna start off with examples. Say this is my binary tree, right? I have nine, three, six, nine. I wanna check for every single node X in my binary tree, there are no nodes greater than X in the path from root to X. That means our node X has to be greater than or equal to every other node before it. Now we don't actually need to compare every single node before it. We can just keep track of the max value we've seen. So what I'm going to do is at the first node over here, I'm going to mark this, of course, as a good node. So keeping track of our good nodes, we have one good node so far. We have no left child in nine, so nothing to check here. But three over here, I'm going to compare it against the max value I've seen so far. I've only seen nine, so checking three against nine, we're not greater than equal to it. So we're not a good node. Now to its left and right child, I'm going to pass in the max value I've seen so far. So the max between nine and three, that is nine. So I'm gonna compare both left and right to nine. So six is not greater than equal to nine. So this is not a good node, but nine over here is greater than equal to the max we've seen in its path before it. So this is also a good node of two. And that's all we need to do. We're gonna write a recursive function going down node by node and just check our node's value against the max value we've seen so far. And we're just gonna keep count of all the good nodes and in the end, return that. So let's go ahead and code all of this up. To code this up, we know we want to write a recursive function. I'm gonna write it within good nodes over here. That way I can have another variable called good to keep track of our good nodes. So I'm gonna define self.good and set that equal to zero. Now I'm gonna define my recursive function within here. So it's going to be able to access self.good and add to that total count. That way we don't need to pass in this variable every single time. So for my recursive function, I'm gonna call this DFS. So DFS over here is gonna take in root. And we also wanna compare our root to the max value we've seen up until that point. So I'm gonna pass in another variable called check. So it's gonna be root and check. What I want to do is check my own value against this variable over here. If it is greater than or equal to it, I can increase the counts of my good node. So if root.val is greater than or equal to check, solve.good plus equals one. So I've made the update that I needed to make if my node is good or not. Now I want to do the same for my child nodes. So if those child nodes exist, so if root.left, I'm going to call this function again. So I'm going to call it DFS with root.left. And what am I passing in for check? I'm going to pass the max between what we have in check so far and my own roots value. So root.val. That way we keep updating it based on every node we see. 
and I'm going to do the same for right. So if root dot right exists, if it doesn't, there's no point in going in this function. But if it does, we do the same exact thing, call this with right and pass in the max of check and root dot val. And that is it for our recursive function. Now we just want to go ahead and call this function. So I'm going to call it DFS with root. And what am I going to pass in for check? Do I pass in zero? Do I pass in any random number? For check, I'm just going to pass in my own roots value. This is that root node, right? By default, it's going to be a good node. It's going to be greater than equal to itself. So I'm passing in root.val as a value to check against. And once this is done, once this is through running, I just return self.good. So we return self.good. And that is it. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now we're going to do a complete walkthrough of our code going line by line just to see how our recursive call stack is being built and visualize what we're doing. For our walkthrough, I'm going to be using example one over here. I have that tree down below. And walkthroughs are really important because they really let us see what our code is doing. It really puts everything together. This is especially useful if maybe trees are new to you, recursion is new. If that's the case, I definitely recommend sticking around and completely watching this part of the video. So going through our code line by line, the first thing we do is go into this with our root being three and we define self.good to be zero. Next, we define our recursive function and we call it with our root and our root val. So I'm going to be passing in three as our root. This is the actual node and this is the value. So this is just the integer three as my value. Now this is root over here and three is check over here. So now we're in this function, we come across our first if condition, if root.val greater than equal to check. That is true, right? The value of this root is greater than equal to check. We increment self.good by one. So now this is one going in this condition, if root.left, that is true, we do have a left node. We're gonna call this function again with that left node. So right now for this function, we're in this if condition over here, we're calling DFS again with root.left. So what is the left node of three? That is one. And we're going to pass in the max between check, which was three and our own roots value, which is also three. So this just becomes three, which means calling DFS again with root dot left. We're comparing one against three. So now we're in this function for one and three. One is not greater than equal to three. So we don't increment this count and we make a check if root dot left. That is true, right? We have a left child. So we're in this if condition here and we can't go into the other lines of code after us up until we return from here. So I'm just marking saying we are in this if condition right now. I'm calling this again with its left child. The left child of one is three and we wanna pass in the max between what we have in check, which is three. This is the max value we've seen in our path so far. And we also wanna compare against our own roots value, but our roots value is one. So the max here is going to stay three. So we have three, three going in this function. Root is now three and check is three. Root.val is greater than equal to check. So we add one to good. Good is now two. Going in this if condition, root.left doesn't exist here. So we don't go in here. We check if right exists. It also doesn't. So we're out of this function and we've finished. Now that we've finished this, we can go back to our caller. So our caller was over here, root node one, and we just finished going in its left condition over here, right? So now we're going to go in root dot right. There is no right child here. So we're out of this function as well and can return to its caller. So we just finished going in root dot left for our root node of three. We are out of this if condition we've returned from here. And now we can check if we have any right nodes, which we do. We have four over here. So we're going to call this again with four. Calling this with root dot left, we're going to pass in four and we're passing in the max between check and root dot value. Our current root is three. We're back at that original function we had, right? We're in that if condition for it now. And our root node is three, but our check here is also three. So we're just gonna pass in the max between three and three, which is three. So we go in this function DFS. Our root is now four. We're in this part of our tree. We make a check over here. Root.val is greater than equal to check. So we up that count for good. We have three good nodes so far. And we see if we have a left child. We do. So we call DFS again with four's left child and we're passing in the max between three and our own roots value of four. The max here is going to be four. So we pass that in as check. And now once we call this again, root is one and now check is four. And as you can see, if we update every single time between the max of what we had so far in our own roots value, we keep updating check to make sure it always stores the max value we've seen in our path. 
So right now we're back in this function, is root.val greater than equal to check? It's not. So we go out of here, we make a check if root.left exists, it also doesn't. Root.right also doesn't exist for node one. So we're out of this function and we return to our caller. So we just finished going in this condition for root node four. We're out of this condition, we now go over here if root.right. That is also true, we have a right child. So now we're gonna call this with root.right. So we pass in five as our root.right and the max between check, which was three, and our root, which is four. Here the max is four. So once we call this again, we are setting root to be five and check to be four. Now root.val is greater than equal to check, so we add one to self.good, it goes to four. There is no left child for five, there's also no right child for five, so we exit out of this function. We just finished going in the if condition for right, so we exit out of here as well. And we exit out of our original caller as well. We have self.good being four, and that is what we return. And if you can see here, that is exactly what we were expecting. Now, talking about space and time complexity for our solution, we are going through every single node in our binary tree. So this is going to be O of n if there are n nodes in the tree. And for space, our recursive call stack could be as big as a number of nodes in our tree. If we just had a one-sided tree, it went from three to one to three, we would just keep going down our recursive call stack for n nodes if there were n nodes in our tree. And once we finally got to the bottom, we would finally return out of all n function calls. So for space, this is also going to be O of n. Now we just went ahead and solved count good nodes in binary tree. We did a walkthrough with example one, but if you have any questions, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.